Hey everyone, welcome to Weld.com. I'm gonna be talking about socket welding. Socket welding is two pieces of pipe. Uh, one's a little bit bigger, the ID, and the other one, OD, is a little bit smaller. And they slide into each other, and it creates a little fillet. All right, I'm gonna show you how to prep the pipe, fit it, and weld it. And the most important step is take that perfect, perfect Instagram picture. Let's go ahead and get started on this bad boy. All right, let's say we're, we got a blueprint. We're looking at a blueprint. And the blueprint which says it's got to, the pipe's got to stick inside the other pipe four and a sixteen. So we're going to come here and just mark four and a sixteenth here. And then the other part of the drawing, it says from here to here, you got to maintain eight and five eighths. So this is going to be eight and five eighths sticking out of here. Uh, then this side's going to be four and sixteenth. So the next step is we're going to draw our line with a pipe wrap. So we know this is going to line up with our pipe. This is a pipe wrap. This one is one to six inches. Uh, today we're gonna to be using it for drawing a straight line around our pipe. There's quite a few things that you can use this for, uh, finding measurements, your angle, fish mouth, coping, and your branch tees. You can lay them out with it. I mean, there's lots of things you can do with these. All right, the most important thing is keeping it on the line. You wanna keep this tight, each pass. You wanna snug her up. You wanna match these ends, match each one on this side and it's this side. If you don't have this straight, your line won't be straight around your pipe. All right, so make sure your soapstone's got a real fine tip on it so your line's not fat. The reason I'm putting a line on because I know I want to remove mill scale right here. I'll be doing it again later. So that's done. So we're going to grind, let's say, an uh, inch back here and an inch back over here. So we're going to clean this mill scale off right here because this pipe's sliding inside and that's our 4 and 16th. Then we're going to take this other pipe. We don't have to draw a line or nothing. We're just going to clean the mill scale get some of this rust off about an inch back. Uh, so when we put these in together, it's all clean, fresh metal. All right, I'm using a uh, Berg wheel, Victor Green, 36 grit. It's pretty aggressive. That's why I want, I want to get, speed up my time. Uh, all we're gonna do is just clean this up one inch. We're going to take our me tape measure, measure four and a sixteenth. We draw our line with the pipe wrap again. It's the first time we drew it, we didn't know exactly where to uh, remove the mill scale. Instead of grinding the whole pipe, uh, this basically saves us time. All right, you see how loose this pipe is? So we want to split that gap evenly all around four sides. So what we're going to do is measure the ID of this pipe right here. It's two and a half. I always got to write measurements down. So it's two and a half. Then we're going to measure this pipe. It's two and three eighths. So we got two and three eighths. So we're gonna take two and a half minus two and three eighths. So it's an eighth inch. So we got eighth inch, we need an eighth inch. But if you think about it, you divide uh, eighth inch by two because we got two, um, two space right here on the gap. So it's gonna be a 16. So we need four 16 spacers. We're gonna do one at 12 o'clock, one at six, one at three, and one at nine. And that should space the pipe evenly all the way around. There's tons of different ways you could set this up and do it. It's whatever is at your disposal. So what we're gonna be using is two jacks and a couple levels. So I'm taking this pipe, I'm gonna set it here. There's different ways, remember that guys. Then I'm gonna take this and set it in here. I always get two levels identical because you don't know if they're, the gaps between the black, the black lines and everything could be a little different. Like I noticed each, each of them are wider and each of them, some of them are like narrow the gap. And we're gonna kind of get this leveled up here. Make sure there's no gap. And since we're not level, the table's not level, so we gotta make sure this bubble matches this, this bubble on this uh, pipe here. The next thing is we're gonna get our spacers. Since we need 116 spacers, remember we did our math. All I did is took like ER70S-6 wired 116, whatever's at your disposal. Sometimes these fall around. So I just stick this in here a little bit, take a little tape. You're just not, it's not fighting with you. That's it. Now we're gonna go ahead and level it perfect now. Most important, we gotta get our four and sixteenth line. I almost forgot that. So that's our line. We're gonna match it to the edge of this uh, pipe right here. So this line, this bubble's hugging this side of the line. So we're gonna match it just like that. Then we're gonna check our measurement. We had eight and 11 sixteenths from here to here. And also, if you stand right here, if you look all the way around it, we're even. So I'm using 1 16th filler wire. I like to have my tacks a little small, because so when I'm welding over them, it's not gonna hump up 
like a pregnant worm or something. So I usually tack at a triangle. All right, so I'm gonna be tacking at three, uh, nine, and 12. So we gotta make sure we're maintaining eight and 11 sixteenths from here. So we're at eight and 11 sixteenths on the, on the money. Uh, sometimes you're allowed plus or minus an eighth inch, uh, but we're all good. I usually check three spots. I usually check one, rotate it a little bit, check it, I, I rotate a little bit and check it. So that looks good. We either call an inspector over, but we're practicing. So we're gonna go ahead and chuck it up and weld her out. All right, we got the pipe chucked up in the positioner. We're gonna go ahead and weld this. I'm running about 185 amps, 180. So we're just gonna start on our tack and weld her out completely. So I'm running eighth inch ER70S-6 wire with a foot pedal Everlast 211 SI. So what we're gonna do, I usually start off a tack because if you heat that tack up, your fit sometimes can move, so I usually start off the tack. So all, I got, all I'm doing is resting my arm on the pipe, or you could have it in off the pipe. So we're going to go ahead, start the arc, initiate it, and get it to the size that you want it. I usually get it a little bit big, but it's not crusting or not busting over to the top edge of the pipe. I want to keep it inside the uh, little groove there, the fillet. So that's all I'm doing, and I count I go, to keep my dabs like consecutive. I go 1,001. And each time you want to do that, you like just dab it. 1,001, 1,002, 1,001, 1,002. It keeps your rhythm going if you're not good yet. It keeps all your dabs nice and even. And you're just wetting, you're making sure your toes are wetting in on the sides really good. And make sure your puddle at the root of the fillet is wetting in really good. You're not running too cold. Your puddle's nice and wide. Uh, if you're too cold, your puddle wouldn't be so flat. It would be a little bit convex, a little bit narrow. I'm aiming my torch at uh, 45 degrees uh, in middle joint, uh, 10 degrees, about five to 10 degree push. I'm just running a uh, flex, flex uh, style um, TIG rig here. Uh, I'm running a number eight gas lens. I usually just make sure the, I just make sure the gas lens is a little bit wider than the joint. Uh, so I make sure I have enough coverage, gas coverage. So on my foot pedal, I usually smash it about three quarter inch and make sure I like the size of the puddle for the type of joint I'm welding. And uh, once I like it, I just keep dabbing away. The, um, the more you go around, the pipe is gonna get hotter. So you're gonna either speed up or you're gonna reduce your amps and just keep doing the same thing. 1001, 1001, pay attention to your toes. Your toes are important. Make sure they match every time you dab. My side of my welds, my toes, we're all tied in there. I don't have no undercut. I didn't eat this edge away. Um, everything's nice and uniform. Big shout out to MCR. Um, these gloves are pretty sweet. I like these. The reason I like these, because while I was welding, I'm resting my hand here. This has got this extra protection right here. I didn't feel no heat. And you're right here next to this weld. So you basically got your TIG up front or a MIG in the back. So yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate it, M MCR safety. So I'm Man Cub. Hope this is very educational and helpful. Thank you for your support. I'll see you guys next, next time. Learning is key. Right now, I'm going to take my perfect Instagram picture. Oops. All right, guys. Make sure you follow me on Man Cub Welder at Instagram. Appreciate it.